Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our simple Simon Says style app game tutorial. So, uh, what we did in our first episode was we just made our game be able to randomly select a colour and turn it on and off. Uh, hopefully it won't pick red all the time, there we go. So we, we're picking all these random colours. But obviously, a game like this, we want to be able to uh, check when the player presses something. So that's what we're going to handle now, is taking input when the player touches one of these buttons here. So to do that, we're obviously going to need to create a script to control this. So let's go into our scripts folder. And we'll create a new C# -sharp script, and we'll call this one um, "Button Controller," and we'll open this up here in Mono Develop. Okay, and what once we have it open here, um, so let's think about what we want to actually do when we click a button. So we want to do. What we wanted to do is send a check to the game manager to check if the button that's been pressed is the same as the button that has lit up before. So that's what we're going to do in a, in a few minutes here. But the first thing we want to do is make the button light up when we touch it because we want the player to be able to get some instant feedback so that they know that they've actually pressed the button and something has happened. So if we're going to be doing that, we need access to the sprite render that's on every button. If I just drop this menu down, so we have all the different colors here, we have our sprite render, and we know that we're using um, the transparency in the game manager script to make the alpha value go from uh, bright to or dark to bright and then back again. So let's do basically the same thing with our, con our, our button controller script here. So we'll obviously need a reference to the sprite render itself, which is attached to the object. So we're going to do a private, and not if I could spell private properly, private sprite renderer that we'll call just the sprite, keep it nice and simple. And then in our start function, we're going to need to make a reference, to, or we're going to need to assign that to be the one that's attached to the same object. So we'll say the sprite is equal to uh, get component sprite renderer. So then we know we're talking about the sprite renderer that's attached to the same object that this script is on, and a, a version of this script will be on every single one of these objects in our world. So we have, we know where that is now, so now we need to say, okay, so when our, our player clicks on the button, or when the mouse clicks down, we're going to make our, our, um, our button light up, and then when the player lets go, we'll turn the light off, is essentially what we're saying is going to happen. So the way we're going to do that is to use a, a different function down here. Rather than uh, void start or void update, we can use another built-in Unity function, which is void on mouse down. And basically what on mouse down does is it detects whenever the player clicks on the object. Now the object also has to have a box collider attached to it, so we're going to attach box colliders to our buttons in a minute. But um, basically, the down part of it means is when the button on your player on the player's mouse is pressed down. Uh, so there's also uh, on mouse um, stay, I think, and on mouse up for when the player releases the button. So on mouse down, what we're going to do is take the sprite. Uh, the, so the sprite that we already know has been assigned, we're going to get the color of that and we're going to change the color so that it uh, lights up for us. So we're going to say the sprite that color, much like we did for the game manager, and we're going to say that should be equal to a new color of, we're going to keep the same RGB values, so we'll use the sprite.color.r and the sprite.color.g and the sprite dot color dot b and then we'll change in the alpha value to be equal to 1f so that we know it's fully lit up so that works perfectly fine so let's do the opposite for when our player let's go let's go of the button so that the button uh, turns back off again so we'll say void on mouse up and in between the brackets we're just going to copy the same line of code here and at the end we're going to change this to be not 0.5f, just like we did in the game manager script. Okay, so we'll save that, and then we'll go back into Unity and make that work for us. So as I said, to make the on mouse down or, or on mouse up or any kind of interaction like that, oh, we've got a bit of an error here on line 11, what are we missing? Oh, there's no semicolon at the end of the line. 
the most common uh, coding mistake in the world probably um but yeah as i was saying to make the on mouse down on mouse up work we need a box collider attached to our objects let's just switch back to the scene view here and zoom in a bit okay so we need to give a box collider to all of these objects so we're going to highlight all of them in the hierarchy here and then we're going to go to add component and box collider 2d i already had a highlighted there handily um and then as you can see it adds a box to every single one of them just the way we wanted to and we're going to change the size of these i've uh, kind of messed around with a bit and 0.14 is kind of roughly the right size for uh so that they're not overlapping with each other but it's roughly the right size of each one of these buttons so now we have box collider attached so now our on mouse down should work perfectly for us so let's uh, actually wait one more thing we need to actually attach the script to them of course because they won't do anything without the script so we'll drag our button controller script while they're still all highlighted and plop it in there like that and now we can hit play and we should be able to see them light up when we click on them huh the red one isn't lighting up for some reason did i not Okay, the reason the red one isn't lighting up is because, well, now it is, is because I've hit the start game. So, because of how our, our game manager script is currently handling things, we'll be changing this so it doesn't do this anymore as we go forward. But, at the moment, it's setting, it's just, after the first button plays, it's setting that to be, um, to stay dark the whole time. And the reason that happens on the red one at the very start of the game is because we have uh, zero being selected by default. So in the update loop, it's telling zero to always remain at um, 0.5F uh, transparency. So that's why the red button wasn't working, but all the other buttons do work. So we know that our code is working perfectly fine. We just need to uh, make some changes to our game manager, which we're gonna be making in the course of doing everything still here. So now that we know the button does work, let's actually check uh, let's actually make that do something in our script. So we'll actually need to open up our game manager here. And we're going to have to add an extra function here that we can call uh, from the button controller script to make an, to uh, check and see which button has been pressed. So we know that we're using color select to determine which button is active at the moment. So we can use color select to determine uh, which button is being checked. But to actually know which button has been checked, the most simple and straightforward way is to attach a number value to each one of these objects. So we have one through six here. So what we can do is say, okay, so our red one will actually start at zero because our, our, we know our color checker value, or sorry, our color select value can be zero to five. So what we'll do is we're gonna add zero to red and then yellow will be, two, will be one, two, three, four, five, counting through them all like that so we need a number value that we can assign to them and then easily check that in our game manager so what we'll do in our button controller script is we'll just add a new public int and um, this button number like that and then we're going to go back to our game manager and we're going to add a function here that we can use to check these values so what we're going to say is uh, a new public void um, we'll call this color pressed like that and we'll put those two brackets there like that for the moment um, but what we actually want to do is rather than just leaving these uh, two brackets here empty we're going to put an int value in here so we're going to say int which button which means that when we call it from our button controller script here what we can do is say okay run uh, the color press function on the game manager and send in the current button number value to that. So then what we can do here is simply check if uh, our color select, which is the number that we randomly selected to make light up in the game, if that is equal to uh, whichever button has been sent in, so which button. So if that is true, then we're gonna just send a little message to ourselves. This won't actually appear to the players at any point, but just to ourselves, so we're, as we're building the game, we can understand what's going on. We can add uh, debug.assert. We can add debug.log and send a little message that says correct, like that. And we'll just add a little else in here so that if 
the whatever button was pressed is not equal to our color select well then in that case we should just send a little message to ourselves again that says wrong just so we know what's going on okay so that's fine so this way we know that we're actually able to check it so let's go back to our button controller and add in the point where we're going to check that now logically you might first think that um where we should call this function would be on mouse down so when our player clicks the button we immediately go and check it in our script and it goes okay it's either right or wrong but what you actually want to do is put it in on mouse up because in terms of playability and stuff like that if something happens the immediate first moment that the player uh, touches the button for example it happens too fast and they don't have time to process it but if you do it at the moment when they let go then they've no, they kind of know they've completed an action and that um, they'll understand a bit better and so I'll just put it in here for a second so we'll say oh actually no we need a reference to our game manager script of course don't we so we'll add a new private game manager that we'll call the GM and then as we do in a million other things we'll just say the GM is equal to find object of type game manager like so and then in on up so we can just say the GM dot the name of our function which is color pressed we can say color pressed and then we can send it the value of uh, what our current what our buttons current number is so that's this button number up here so we can send this button number like that and hit our semicolon and then we can save that and pop back into the game here okay so now what we want to do is add all those numbers to the buttons like I said we want to be able to update them so red is zero yellow is one green is two blue is three purple is four and orange is five so you want to make sure that these numbers correspond with the position they are within this array here so I've obviously set all these up to be just in the same order here so it's nice and straightforward but if you have them in a different kind of pattern make sure that uh, whatever if red here is at zero so we may make sure that red has the zero value here and if for some reason you had like green at position five here so then you would need to make sure that green has the number five in here okay so now we should be able to uh, check this out here when we hit play we will start our game so we, our orange is the correct one let's press the wrong button first so if we hit the yellow there we go we get a little uh, message down the corner here saying wrong so let's try this again start again we hit we hit orange and we get the correct now that light is still staying off because of the same little bug that we have but we'll cover that in an upcoming episode and fix it all out uh, but there we go so that works perfectly fine for us and you'll see what I mean about when you uh, press the button and when it t sends you the information so if we hit start again here so we got purple let's go for a wrong answer or no we we'll hit the right answer first just so that resets we'll go again now if we were to click on this one you can see we can hold this as long as we want so it's kind of giving the player an extra bit of time to think although they can't really do anything about it but we unclick and then it goes wrong however so we get also get the feedback of like the buttons lighting up and stuff like that so it makes a little bit more sense whereas if you were just to do it when the mouse is clicked down once we start adding sound effects and things like that it happens way too fast and players kind of get overwhelmed and they get annoyed at what you're doing so always remember when you want an action like that to happen try and do it on the moment when the button is released rather than the moment when the button is clicked but that's going to be it for this episode we've got our um lights all lighting up nicely first and the players able to press the button but of course this is a simon says style game so we don't want them to just be able to respond to one button press we want to be able to light up a whole sequence of lights and then the player to have to press those buttons so in the next episode we're going to take a look at making lights occur in a sequence and that sequence can get longer and longer the more correct answers the player gets so thanks for watching and i'll see you all very soon Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. 
And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.